Alrighty, everybody. So here we are with the cardiovascular system reflexes and how to map these uh, bad girls and boys on the feet. First and foremost, uh, we need to draw our guidelines. We'll also be going through hands, face, and ears as well. So we have our shoulder line guideline, just where the toes meet the ball of the foot. Then we have our diaphragm guideline, just below the ball of the foot, just as the distal arch starts to pick up. Then we have our proximal head of the fifth metatarsal, indicating that direct knee reflex, which creates our waistline. And then we have the start of the heel or the base of the cuboid knot, which creates our pelvic line. So those are our guidelines. Uh, and as far as the cardiovascular system is concerned, you might think that we only need to know horizontal zone two because horizontal zone two is the chest space, which is the heart reflex. However, we are going to map the entire cardiovascular system, which although still very simple because we're basically just gonna follow major blood flow, uh, it's we need to know all of the various vesseling. So if we wanted to kind of turn our attention to the bottom of the page while I draw you a nice little human. Uh, we have the head and then we have the neck and bear with me. We have the shoulders and a thumb and a hand. And we have the shoulders and a thumb and a hand. It's cold outside. They're wearing mittens. Okay, so nice little stick person with the arms way too big for the rest of the body. Totally okay. So we have the heart. And the heart itself is more on the left side, uh, but from the heart, we have various forms of circulation. So we have the circulation that goes up into the brain. Then we have the circulation that stays locally into the lungs. And then we have the circulation that goes down into the various extremities. So that's how we're basically going to map each of these extremities, is we're gonna start with the heart reflex. So the heart reflex being mostly On that left side, we can see that. Um, but then we also have the circulation that would go throughout the lungs. Then we would have the circulation that would go up into the head space. And then we would have the circulation that would actually follow down the core of the body. and branch out into the lower body, okay? So this is our major outline of kind of the various blood flow patterns of the reflexes. Now, here's where we get into our assessment kind of specifics, is we're not just focused on kind of this as being a cardiovascular map, we're talking about fluid and blood. So what we're looking for is in the various extremities, where is the fluid going and where is the blood going? Fluid will be more important in the next lesson for the lymphatic system, but it's also relevant. Here we're looking for more specifically vesseling. So especially like around the low back reflexes, do you see a lot of superficial vesseling indicating that blood flow is being restricted here? In the chest area, do you find that all of that um, kind of ball of the foot tissue is actually red, puffy, and fluid filled? Um, are you seeing veins popping up anywhere? And then also if we wanted to like extend that, I know it seems kind of redundant, but extending that uh, with that vascularity that would go down the arms kind of throughout that whole zone two space as an extension of that. You know, all of that is super relevant. So really paying attention to where the blood is flowing in the extremity, and that will give you an idea of how the cardiovascular system is operating or not operating accordingly. Okay, so that is the feet. Let's move on to the hands. Okay, so the hands, remember, this is anatomical position, right? So the palms are flipped open, but we're actually going to view the thumb as the midline and that index finger as vertical zone five laterally, uh, the lateral body, but it's just flipped because of anatomical position. So a little confusing, uh, but just as an FYI. So we want our shoulder line guideline and again, we've just got to make a little bit of a dip there because the hands are shaped a little bit differently. Horizontal zone two, below that proximal joint of the thumb. And then we have our proximal head 
of the fifth metacarpal as our waistline, and then the second row of carpals, which we kind of just have to draw imaginarily as our pelvic line. Okay? So those are our guidelines, and then that means that with the thumbs being midline and horizontal zone two, with the right hand here and the left hand here, do we see how I did that? So right hand, this is the client's right hand, and then this is the client's left hand. Okay. So you might be looking at it like this from a treatment standpoint. So they're on the table and their head is here, their body is here, their feet are down here. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't make it more confusing. But this is their right hand, this is their left hand. So that means that our heart reflex is going to be predominantly on this side, on that proximal joint. So when we talk about bunions of the feet being a sign of cardiovascular distress, especially if they're on that left side and you see it as red, puffy, hot, you know, all the blood uh, markers, we would then do the same thing for the hands. So if on the left hand, that proximal thumb joint has started to swell, started to get painful, you know, all that stuff, that's a sign that the client is having some of that, those cardiovascular reflexes um, are starting to flare and start to get a little bit gnarly, which is not okay. So we wanna go up into the headspace. So each finger representing an extension of that headspace circulation. Then we want to go throughout the chest space. We could even draw little lungs in there if we wanted, which is super wonky, uh, but still appropriate just to give you a visual. And then we have our central circulation, which goes down the spine. And then if we really wanted to be specific, going into vertical zone five, horizontal zone five at the very, very base. Okay. And that is the circulation of the hand. So again, horizontal zone two is our mainstay for the lung circulation as well as for the heart. Then we follow the major patterns of blood. And that's not to say that there's not blood happening in the center of the reflexes for the upper and lower digestive system as well as around the wrist. That's definitely a very important area. But when we think of major arteries, that's where they travel. They go up into the head, around the lungs, and then down into the lower body through the center line. So that's kind of how we would map the cardiovascular system reflexes. Moving on to the face. Starting with our guidelines, we have our shoulder line guideline, AKA the eyebrows, AKA give them a unibrow. Then we have our zygomatic bone as our diaphragm guideline. Then we have the extension of our lip line as the waistline. And then we have the jaw line as our pelvic line. Okay? Which means that horizontal zone two, more on the left side, here we have the heart. Which I know is like blowing your minds right now. So what I tell my students all the time, we're about to do some crazy stuff to this girl's eyes. I'm so so sorry. Um, but when we see a lot of the petechia, a lot of the superficial veins that are uh, coming into the eyes of a person, that indicates that the cardiovascular system and specifically the respiratory cardiovasculars are starting to get very very red and angry. Um, from an emotional standpoint, that's really significant, but also from a cardiovascular standpoint. When we're seeing a lot of really heavy redness happening around the eyes, that's core chest space, including heart. So something to be aware of. So we have all of our lungs, which means also that any fluid retention, um, dark circles around the eyes, anything like that, very much lymphatic, but also cardiovascular. Then we have our kind of arm extension, then up into the head down the center line into the lower body. That is pretty much our circulatory system for the face. So we really wanna be paying attention to how the eyes are behaving. Then we wanna look at that center line for the major cardiovascular and then really pay attention to the jaw uh, and then up into the head as well. When we see like little veins starting to pop in the head, that indicates vascular pressure, uh, which is a pretty easy sign. Like we all know when people get angry, they get pressured, their face gets red, but specifically, if we're seeing a lot of vasculature happening in the headspace, a lot of trapped 
fluid, a lot of trapped blood, that's an indication that there's a lot of horizontal zone one pressure. And with the face as being a horizontal zone one structure, kind of big picture of the body, it's more apt to show us those horizontal zone one reflexes anyway. Moving on to the ears, our last extremity. So we have at the top of the triangular fossa, our horizontal zone one, our shoulder line, then we have at the bottom of that triangular fossa, that dip just before the simbaconca, that little cave, that first ditch, we have our diaphragm guideline. Then we have the kind of flap of skin right in between that divides the simbaconca from the cavumconca which indicates our waistline guideline. And then we have the base of the auditory opening, that cavum cunca, as our pelvic line. And those are the various guidelines of the ear and the cardiovascular system. So this triangular fossa, this lovely, lovely, lovely ditch, this kind of crevice in the center, this is my respiratory guide. It's also very heart-centered of the chest space. So when we think of heart, we want to think of left side dominant, but definitely still present in this area. And it is definitely on the helix as well. It's more so underneath uh, in that flap, that literal indent. When we think of reflexology in general, it's very important to think as literally as possible. So when we think of like the caves of the ear as being the caverns of the body, it's very appropriate to think, hey, this looks like the lungs would fit in there. This looks like the stomach and liver would fit in there. This looks like the pelvic basin where all of the digestive and reproductive and urinary organs would sit. That's how we map it, right? So we're trying to see the body through the lens of the extremity. So here we then have our head circulation, our chest lung, our arm circulation, and then down the core into the lower body. And that is our cardiovascular map of the ears. Again, we're really paying attention to that triangular fossa, that ditch. Uh, in horizontal zone two, and very much even on this picture, you can see if you really zoom in, there's that petechia, those little vessels. Let me highlight some of those real quick. You can see uh, what, I, what I'll tell my students is you always want to look for lightning in the ears uh, because the, that petechia looks like just fingers of lightning. Um, I know growing up in Tampa, Florida, USA, uh, we are the lightning capital of the U.S. Uh, so it's, you know, I, I know that image a lot of just that electric uh, webbing that tends to happen and so I relate that to very much how the vessels behave in an ear that is undergoing that horizontal zone 2 respiratory cardiovascular distress so something interesting but that is how we would map the cardiovascular system on the ears pretty easy great job everybody